about 18 months later, all of my bank accounts were negative. And I borrowed $15,000 from friends and family to try and get my business off the ground. It wasn't working. So I, I went to a couple of mentors and I said, hey, what am I doing wrong here? Uh, and and they, they gave me some advice. They said, Chandler, you got to learn to be friends with Sam. And I said, who the heck is Sam? And they said, it's sales and marketing. All right, our next speaker, and I'm really excited about him. Uh, this guy is a, an incredible friend. Uh, he's been in my home. His parents have been in my home. I think the world of him, and I really do believe, and so much so that this year, in 2022, my team is focused on us writing my first book and releasing it at the beginning of 2023, um, and we're talking about all of that right now, but a book is an incredible thing to allow you to communicate your message to the world. You can communicate your message through your signature talk, Pat Quinn, your content, Ray Higdon, but also your book. And so I'm curious by in the chat, how many books have you written so far? How many books have you written so far? Let's see, 13, wow. Look at all of the zeros. But yet, like, I think 85% of people want to be able to write a book. So I'm excited. YouTube, Facebook, backstage, Instagram, everywhere, Spanish speaking, English speaking. Would you guys welcome to the stage Mr. Chandler Bowl? Give it up for Chandler Bowl. Hey, hey, what's happening, everyone? Let me know in the chat uh, if you can hear me. Uh, and see me and where you're tuning in from, and um, we're going to get started. I'm excited to be here with you today. I'm in a, a, a new spot, so you'll have to pardon. I got a, kind of a not my normal setup and, and um, just a little bit of background noise, so hopefully uh, you don't hear that. Hopefully that's not too bad. And um, I'm trying something different today, which is no slides, which as you guys know, if, if, if you've done um, talks, it's like, it's like being a musician and not having your guitar. It's just like it's your comfort zone. Uh, but I'm going to go no slides today so that I can see you, so I can see your chat, uh, and we're going to keep this uh, short and punchy. So uh, I was 17 years old, and my dad handed me this book. This book is called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. How many of you guys have read this book? Okay, life-changing book. Uh, and when my dad handed me this, this book at 17 years old, it introduced me to, two, to a few concepts that I now wholeheartedly believe. The first one is, is a really big one, and that's that books change lives. That book changed my life forever. It changed my life. How many of you have had your life changed by reading a book? Right? Probably almost everyone here. So books change the lives of readers, right? When they read this book, right? But also books change the life of authors, you know, I run a company called Self Publishing School. We help people write and publish books. Uh, and, you know, we run a company that helps people publish books, but I really believe that we run a company that's a personal development company <laughs> and we change lives through books, right? We always say it's, it's not about the book, it's about who you become uh, in the process of writing and publishing that book, right? So my dad handed me this book. Uh, it, it changed my life. It showed me I wanted to run my own business one day. Uh, and it also introduced me to this concept of passive income. Uh, which was pretty exciting. But then I realized, hold up, you know, I don't have $40,000 to put down on a duplex at 17 years old. Um, so went off to school uh, and learned how to run a business uh, to try and learn how to run a business, right? Now, pretty quickly, I discovered uh, I was learning how to run a business from professors who had never ran a business. <laughs> uh, and that didn't make too much sense to me. So I decided to drop out. Now, right, right before I dropped out, I, I wrote and published my very first book, okay? Uh, and uh, this was uh, kind of about the same time. I remember a friend, he asked me, uh, he said, hey, Chandler, I heard that you published this book. I heard that it's doing pretty well. Question for you, is the book actually making any money? Like Books don't make money, right? And I thought for a second and I said, you know what? Actually, yes, the book made 400 bucks yesterday while we were snowboarding. But even more than that, it was the ability to do work once right? I, I did work once. I created this book, and that book went out into the world, uh, and it started making an impact. It started growing my income, bringing in a few thousand dollars a month, uh, and it was the jumping off point for my business and for my platform, 
right? And so I just kind of learned from this experience that books change lives. And it introduced me to this concept I now call uh, leveraged impact, right? It's the ability to do work once. And then that you create this book, right? And then this book goes out and creates an impact. It boosts your authority. The root word of authority is author, right? It's, it's hard to become an authority without first becoming an author. And it builds your platform, Right. There's a there's a reason, you know, when when Michael Hyatt and Stu way back in the day created like kind of the first version of platform, they wrote and published a book called Platform, right, to to create that membership program. And that and that's exactly what I did um, with self-publishing school in a similar way. So it's a jumping off point for your platform and for your business. So, well, I'm going to break this presentation into three parts. All right. And I want you to grab a piece of paper. All right. Grab a piece of paper, blank sheet of paper. Uh, you're going to actually make some progress on your book uh, in the next 15 minutes. All right. You're going to leave here with progress on your book. So uh, grab a blank sheet of paper. That will come in handy in just a little bit. All right. So number one, I'm going to talk about self-publishing versus traditional publishing, pros and cons. Which one should you choose? Number two, we're going to talk about how to come up with an idea in as little as a weekend uh, and write a draft in as little as a weekend, which you're probably thinking, Chandler, you're crazy. Uh, or that sounds crazy because it is, <laughs> uh, but I'll walk you through a little bit of a process here that'll speed it up. And then number three, I'll walk you through kind of some fundamentals of launching the book. All right. So let's start with self-publishing um, versus traditional publishing. And so, uh, you know, it used to be that the only way you sold books was to get into bookstores, right? Uh, that was where people bought books. And the only way to get into bookstores was to have a publishing deal. The only way to have a publishing deal is to have an agent, all of these gatekeepers and middlemen keeping you from ultimately selling books and getting published, right? Well, now 70% of all books sold are sold on Amazon uh, and you don't, need, uh, you don't need a publisher to publish on Amazon, right? Um, but there's, there's two or three other main differences, okay? So if you self-publish, you're gonna make higher royalty rates. Uh, it's, it's gonna cost you less in the long term, uh, and you're gonna save a whole lot more time, right? Instead of taking years, you can get it done faster, you publish, uh, you, you know, you have control, you can get leads, sales referrals for your business, like all of those things, right? So for 99.9% .9 of authors, uh, it makes more sense uh, to self-publish. The only time it makes sense to traditionally publish is if you can get a big uh, book deal, you've got a massive audience, uh, you can get an advance, all that stuff. Otherwise, it's going to make more sense uh, to self-publish. All right, so that's number one. Now, number two how do you actually write this thing, right? Well, first you got to have an idea and then, you, and then you can get started in the writing process, okay? Um, so I want to do a quick poll here. How many of you know what you want to write about? If that's you, type in the chat, I have an idea. How many of you aren't quite sure what you want to write about? If that's you, type not sure. And then how many of you have too many ideas? All right, if that's you, type too many ideas in the chat. So uh, not sure. I have an idea or too many ideas uh, in the chat here. I see uh, Tumia says, uh, I have an idea. Oscar says, not sure. Um, Gian has an idea. Hattie has an idea. And um, we got a bunch of people with too many ideas. <laughs> uh, Cassie, Nicole, Yolanda have an idea. Okay, awesome. So we're kind of all over the map. This is great. So I'll, I'll break this into two parts. Uh, part number one is the idea finder is what I call it. All right. And so this is really just two or three questions to ask to come up with an idea. All right. Uh, so question number one, um, what, 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 do you, what do you do for work or what, what business do you run? Right. Um, almost all of us are knowledge workers, meaning we get paid to do a job or run a business for knowledge in our head. Uh, and that in that knowledge is a really great book. If I were to try to do what you do today with no prior experience, there would be a gap between where I'm at and where you're at from your years or decades of experience, in that gap is a really great book, right? If you run a business, if you have a platform, what are the broken record conversations that you keep having over and over and over again with every new client or prospect, right? The best way to stop talking about it is to write a book on it and then point to that book. And that book will be the best thing you've ever done um, to grow your business, right? Because it preemptively um, brings in leads, sales, referrals, counters, objections, all those things, right? So those, that, that can kind of get the ideas flowing. Uh, maybe you're writing fiction or maybe, uh, you know, uh, you could write something, hey, hey, what are you passionate about? Like, there's a lot of things to kind of get ideas flowing. But what about 
when, if you got too many ideas, right? A lot of people are, it's like, man, I've got three or four books. Which ones, which one do I write first? Right. Well, I want you to ask yourself, if you're in that camp, I want you to ask yourself these three questions. And as soon as you narrow in on one idea, I want you to type one idea in the chat. Okay. So question number one, which one can I finish a rough draft for the fastest? All right. Question number two, which one am I most likely to finish? All right. And then question number three is which one's going to help me grow my platform? All right, so this is, it's got to be aligned with the thing that you're trying to build, right? If you want the book to truly be one of the best things that you've ever done uh, to grow your platform. So ask yourself these, those three questions. And then while you're doing that, I want you to reach for your piece of paper. All right, so if you got a piece of paper, blank sheet of paper, looks something like this. All right, so grab your paper and we're going to actually, we're going to make a little bit of progress on your book. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to write your one idea in the middle of the page. All right, your one idea in the middle of the page. It should look a little something like this. All right, so you got a little bubble in the middle of the page with your one idea. All right, and then step number two, and I'm gonna actually give you a minute uh, to do this, okay? So we're gonna have a little bit of uncomfortable silence it's going to be fun. We're going to work on our mind maps, okay? So um, part two, I want you to take um, two minutes right now to mind map everything that you can think of on this topic. How many of you have heard of a mind map, right? Pretty much everyone. Uh, this is not a new concept. What's new is using it, all right? So we're going to actually work on your mind map. So a mind map is just a brain dump. It's going to look something like this, of all the ideas for your for your book. I'm actually, I'm working on a book right now. This is my mind map. <laughs> all right, I'm about, uh, I finished a chapter this morning. All right, so two minutes on the clock. I want you to mind map everything that you can think of on this topic, okay? So what are the stories that you have? What are the lessons that you've learned, all right, on this topic? What are those broken record conversations? You're on your way to completing step number one in the three-step writing process that I teach, okay? Step number one is to create a mind map. Step number two is to turn that mind map into an outline, all right? And then step number three is to write the book one chapter at a time, all right? And so it looks like we got a bunch of people made progress here. Awesome. Uh, Alisa, Jean, Tara, Shiva, awesome. Faye, Carrie. Uh, Carrie Ann, Nancy. Okay. Good news, bad news. Good news is it looks like a bunch of you made progress. Um, bad news is this takes more than two minutes to do this. All right. And so uh, what I'd encourage you to do is take 15 minutes as soon as today's sessions are over or tonight before you go to bed and try and finish your mind map. Okay. How many of you can commit to that? If you can type in the chat, I'm committed. All right, I promise when you take a little bit more time on this mind map, it's going to make the whole writing process easier because now you see it, right? By the way, this works when you're creating a talk. This work, works when you're creating just about any type of content. Um, this is going to be really, really helpful, all right? Uh, and Shiva says, this really helped. Chandler, awesome. Jeff says, progress, baby. Love it. And we got a bunch of people committed. All right, awesome. Great work. And so let's move into step number three here, uh, which is, uh, marketing your book successfully. All right. So I, um, you know, I dropped out of school. My book is doing well. I'm thinking, look out world. Here I come. I'm going to be an overnight success. Right. Uh, I, I, and, uh, I had a friend one time, he's in a mentor. He said, you know, Chandler, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. I found that to be true. Cause what actually happened when I dropped out is about 18 months later, all of my bank accounts were negative. And I borrowed $15,000 from friends and family to try and get my business off the ground. It wasn't working. So I, I went to a couple of mentors and I said, hey, what am I doing wrong here? Uh, and and they, they gave me some advice that I know um, Pete loves to give as well and is totally in agreement with. They said, Chandler, you got to learn to be friends with Sam. And I said, who the heck is Sam? And they said, it's sales and marketing. <laughs> you gotta, you've got to learn sales and marketing. Uh, and, I, and I said, well, there's only one problem. I don't like sales and marketing, right? Uh, and they said, well, it doesn't matter if you like it, you've got to learn it. Whoo, man, it doesn't matter if you like it, you've got to learn it. 
All right. And, and I found this to be true when it comes to marketing anything, right? And especially your book is it doesn't matter if you like it, but you've got to learn it. No one's going to market your book for you. No one's going to care about your book as much as you do, right? So you got to learn to market it. Uh, the one thing that I'll recommend that works better than anything else uh, is to create a launch team. Okay. Uh, now a launch team, it's a small group of people who help support your book. This could be five people. It could be 15 people. It could be 50 people, right? Now they're going to get a free digital copy of the book in advance. Uh, and, and what they're going to do is they're going to leave a review on day one, right? So if you do nothing else, just do this, <laughs> um, create a launch team. This is going to help you get reviews out of the gates. It's so, it's, it's so, so, so important. And then I'll, I'll, I'll give you one more tip. Okay. So people say, don't judge a book by its cover, right? But we all judge books by their, their cover. You need to have a good one. All right. I'm working on an updated and revised version of this book. That's why the corners cut off, but a good cover needs to have three things. It needs to grab attention. This is the billboard for your book, <laughs> right? Uh, and the title needs to be easy to read and your prospects need to instantly understand what the book's about and whether or not it's for them. Right. So what do you think this book's about? It's about a published book. Right. Um, so you need a cover that grabs attention. So those are the two things uh, I'll teach on marketing. All right. Um, so we've talked about three things. We talked about number one, self-publishing versus traditional publishing. Which one should you choose? Pros and cons. Uh, number two, we talked about coming up with an idea. We made some progress on our mind maps. Great work. Uh, we got people committed to finishing their mind maps tonight <laughs> or as soon as this thing's over for the day. Uh, and whatever time it is in the world where you're at. Uh, and then we talked about successfully launching your book. All right, so a couple of steps there, okay? Um, so a couple of resources that'll help. I've got the book outline challenge and the social media for author program. And I recommend those resources. That'll be super helpful uh, to help you get started. Um, and then if you'd like, if you're like, hey, I wanna get, I wanna move faster. I wanna do all that stuff. Um, feel free to book a call with my team at self-publishingschool.com forward slash platform. We'd be happy to chat with you about your book, your next steps, your goals, all that stuff. All right, I'll leave you with this. The legendary Zig Ziglar has a quote. He says, if you, if you wait for all the lights to turn green before leaving home, you'll never get started on your journey to the top. All right, so when, when it comes to whether it's building your platform, whether it's creating, and I loved, uh, you know, just right before this, um, he mentioned this as well, is, is taking action, right? Uh, and so people think that there's going to be this magical time where they got no job, no kids, no responsibilities, no business, and that's when they're going to write their book. Like writing a book is a maybe next year thing. It's a maybe someday thing, right? But they never do it. Well, guess what? If you wait for all the lights to turn green, you'll never get started. You're going to have to get started uh, before you're ready. The timing's never right. So get started now, and I hope this helps. Thank you. Super grateful to have you on today. So guys, give some love to Chandler Bull. Give some love to Chandler Bull.